Senator Cook Chairman recommends that the House recede from the House amendments as printed on Senate Journal page 501, adopt amendments as follows, and place 2036 on the seventh order. Senator Cook. Mr. Chairman, President, uh, just a couple days ago, we passed House Bill 1290. Uh, I explained it on the floor. It was a sunshine bill that dealt with uh, political subdivisions, how they notify the taxpayer of changes made in the mill levy, and it also had a section in there about what our property tax statement would look like. The first three sections of Senate Bill 2336 mirror what was in 1290, except that it has been changed to reflect changes that are being made in House Bill 1319, uh, 50 mills instead of 60 mills. The big change in House Bill 2036 is in Section 4. Mr. Chairman, President, uh, one of our priorities all session has been to reduce property tax. There's been a lot of talk about property tax. We've talked about it at the beginning. We talked about it throughout House Bill 1319, and it's only appropriate that the last policy bill that we pass puts the finishing touches on property tax relief, and that's what House Bill 2036 does. If you'll see in Section 4, there is a 12% reduction in all property tax in the state of North Dakota, 12% reduction that the state will buy down in property tax. That's major tax relief now for the people of North Dakota. It's money back in their pockets. The fiscal note on this bill, the appropriation you will see, is $200 million. That's how we're going to finish this session, Mr. President. It'll take our total tax relief to the people of North Dakota over $1.1 billion. It's major relief. It's good relief. And I urge that we approve this conference committee and then approve the bill. Senator Mathern. Mr. President, um, the carrier of the bill spoke about tax relief to the people of North Dakota. Is this bill, in fact, structured like the earlier bill, wherein the tax relief, in fact, went to North Dakotans? Or is this going to out of state folks? Mr. President, it's going to all property owners. That'll be the people that own property that live here in this state. It'll be people that live out of this state and own property tax, that own property. The relief goes to everybody. It's a 12 percent reduction of your property tax bill. Further discussion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, the question is on the adoption of the Conference Committee report on Senate Bill 2036. As many senators are in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The Conference Committee report is adopted and will switch to the 11th order, Senate Bill 2036. Madam Secretary. Senate Bill 2036, a bill for an act to create and enact Section 57 of the Century Code relating to taxing district budgets and state paid property tax relief credits to amend and reenact Sections 57 of the Century Code relating to notices of property assessment increases, hearings on proposed property tax increases, contents of property tax statements, discounts for early payment of property taxes, and application of relief to current taxes to provide an appropriation, to provide for legislative management studies, to provide an effective date, and to provide an expiration date. Senator Cook. Mr. President, I have a son that's about 35 years old, lives in Bismarck here, owns a home, wife and couple kids, and the last thing he ever wants to talk to me about is politics. Uh, this afternoon I got an email from him, and uh, apparently he's seen the news of what happened in the House, and the email says, my gosh, Dad, aren't we going to get any property tax relief at all? I emailed him back, and I says, yeah, son, don't worry. Before we go home sometime around 4 in the morning, you're going to get some property tax relief. Just hang on and trust me. Mr. President, we have been saying that all session, that the people of North Dakota are going to get property tax relief. Tonight we will end with property tax relief, a major piece of the property tax relief piece. It's $200 million, and uh, I don't know if we need to say any more. It's what we came here to do. We're doing it. I would urge a green light. I would urge us to pass this bill, and I look forward to going home. Further discussion? Hearing none, the question is on the final passage of Senate Bill.
Senator Triplett, your light is broken again. No, Mr. President, I think I'm just tired tonight. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I think the, the speaker, the carrier of the bill is correct that we all did commit to property tax reform when we came here. And I think we all committed to a significant amount of property tax reform. Um, but I think that we're going to do a significant amount of property tax reform in, in the school funding bill, if I'm not mistaken. And so it concerns me, I guess, that, that, uh, that we are leaving here with, um, with a situation that lacks balance. Um, we talked about balancing property tax savings, property tax reductions for folks with um, making sure that we were investing in the future for North Dakota, making sure that taxes were fair for everyone, um, spending some amount of money. And I know there are some here who think that we have fallen short in terms of, um, of protecting the citizens in, in the oil patch um, and helping them to hold their own um, in the face of the, um, the rapid development. There are certainly um, issues that we have failed to deliver on in terms of making um, the, in, in terms of the ability for communities to grow in a way that allows them to really be communities, to get past the crew camps, to get past the situation of, of single men mostly living here and working and returning on their off days to uh, Louisiana or Denver or wherever they came from um, and unable to bring their families because there is no housing for their, their families the schools are overcrowded, the uh, services are, are non-existent in some cases, and, and there most particularly is, is no daycare to be had. And so we have so many positions being unfilled that, that could be filled by um, the spouses of those who are working in the oil fields. And, and I really think that while we have done we have taken an enormous step in the right direction with what we have done. We have fallen short. And I think that I will end up voting no on this bill because I think we have failed to find the right balance, Mr. President. Any further discussion? Senator Dotson, Ron. Mr. President and members of the Senate, I probably can't add e any more as far as explanation as to what this, as far as what this bill does, but uh, it's probably good information for the Senate to have that when we had our conference committee, the conferees from the House indicated to us that they really had hoped and wanted more income tax relief. They had sent uh, House Bill 1250 over here and we'd killed it. It had uh, 350 million dollars worth of income tax cuts and and the Senate position was at that time and I think it was right that we had the 250 million that we had passed earlier but they were uh, they had tried several ways to get more of that income tax back um, and were had had bought that in an amendment form on some of the other conference committees we had but they uh, in our conference committee on this bill indicated that they they were disappointed that they couldn't get more in income tax and they felt that if they couldn't they would at least like to get leave here with more uh, relief in, in uh, a category like property tax. And uh, I think that negotiation is part of what happens at the end. And uh, we had kind of a setback with 1319 this morning. And I think it was part of the way we, we figured uh, out how to compromise and work our way out of that with the House was to uh, go along with uh, their, their thoughts on this and, and provide this extra money for property owners and uh, that's really, I think, kind of the chemistry of how we ended up with this in this bill. Uh, it, was, it was a strong desire on the part of the House conferees to, uh, to try to get more. If they couldn't get it in income tax, they would like to see it in property tax. And, and uh, that's part of how we were able to, to solve the problem we got handed to us this morning when 1319 was killed. So uh, just a little additional information for the Senate to have on on uh, how the pieces came together in uh, the bill we have in front of us. So I'd urge the Senate to adopt it. Senator Andrist. Mr. President and members of the Senate, uh, 
as you know, I'm full of old cliches. And the one I think of tonight is the one that says politics is the science of the possible. Uh, every time when we reach this stage in the Senate, and usually it's late at night, this is my 11th time and possibly my last. So I have to say one more time that politics is a science of the possible. And that's what we have to come to terms with. All of us have some, some regrets, something we had that we wished for, we dreamed for, that we didn't get. But we do come together, we go home as friends, and we come back another day and try again. So one more time, remember politics is a science of the possible. Any further discussion? Hearing none, the question is on the final passage of Senate Bill 2036. Would the secretary please open the key? All senators have voted. Any senator wishing to change their vote? Secretary, close the key. Final tally on Senate Bill 2036 reveals 39 senators voting yay, two senators voting nay, six senators absent and not voting. The bill is passed. Senator Cook. Mr. President, may we be on the eighth order? Without objection, the Senate will be on the eighth order. Senator Cook. Mr. President, I would move that uh, we reconsider our action in which we passed House Bill 1290. I was on the prevailing side. Question is on the motion of Senator Cook that we, that the Senate reconsider the action by which they passed House Bill 1290. As many senators are in favor, please say aye. All opposed say nay. Motion carries. Senator Cook. Mr. President, when we passed House Bill 1290, we expected to have a local property tax effort in education at 50 mills. Uh, as things turned out today, that's going to be 60 mills. So the change that was in 1290 has been made here in 2036. We no longer need 1290, and I would ask that we give it a red light and kill the bill. We would need to shift to the, uh, I assume you're asking that we go to the, uh, we go to the 14th order for that, but uh, we'll- Mr. Uh, President, didn't you hear me say that? I, I've been hearing voices since about 1030, and yeah, I heard that. We will switch to the 14th order, where Senator Cook has just uh, begun the debate. Further discussion under the 14th order on House Bill 1290. Hearing none, the question is the final passage of House Bill 1290. Would the secretary please open the key? All senators have voted. Any senator wishing to change their vote? Secretary, close the key. Final tally on House Bill 1290 reveals all 41 present senators voting nay, six senators absent and not voting. The bill is lost. Senator Wardner. Mr. President, members of the Senate, the conference committees are done. There are only two bills left, and they are both House bills, and they will have to go through the House before they get here. But still, they have to do some of the paperwork and the uh, proofreading on these bills, and it's going to take a little bit. And I'm guessing that it'll be around 12 o'clock that we can expect to act on at least one of these bills. Those bills are 1013, which is the education bill, and 1015, which is the OMB bill. So, Mr. President, we just got to be patient and wait for the final two bills before we uh, call this session to an end. Senator Klein. Well, Mr. President, may we be on the 17th order for announcements? Without objection, the Senate will be on the 17th order for announcements.